it's probably really like, let's hang the witch and make a game out of it. Very I possible. bet it was North Korea. <laughs> Why? No, hold on. Sounds like something. I'm okay with this. I'm okay with blaming things on North Korea. <laughs> <laughs> Gaming news. Welcome back to another episode of My Mom Has Threats podcast, where this week we learned that one of our mothers plants and exfils flamingos in her closest friends' yards. I'm Josh. I'm Andrew. I'm Nathan. And I'm Josh. Now, how are we doing this week, boys? Exfiltration is beautiful. Second oh. second try. We've had worse, so that's a... Uh, I'm yeah, doing this well. this is pretty solid overall. I'm I doing well. all right. Well, I've been editing oh, a whole bunch recently. Usual. I feel like I say that every single time, but like I've been working on some personal stuff. I'm putting a new Papa Yaga out soon. Very soon. You keep saying that? I know. To be I honest, know. when I got that alert that you posted, I was like, is this the Papa Yaga? And it was like, no. how to pigs. Listen, I like, have some oh. heavy rotoscoping I'm working on in that episode that I caused myself that I didn't have to do, but I've, it's made it it's made it a pain. So, it's, it's, so I'm, I'm working on it. So it's Thanksgiving past since we last recorded, so we should probably start with that. How's everybody's big old turkey day? It was good. It was good. Yeah, good. I have a question for you, but I just want to let you guys know that Joel called me Friday. Mm -hmm. We haven't Mm -hmm. talked in a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, I went to work with my dad a couple weeks ago on a Saturday. One of them things where I got home at like... 2 a.m. on a Friday, had to wake back up at 4 a.m. to go back to work kind of deals. And my dad worked with me, so I drove to his house, which is 10 minutes from mine, and then he drove the hour to work. Four, five o'clock in the morning, my dad looks at me and goes, do you know Hitler? (laughs) And I'm on two hours of sleep, and I look at him, I'm like, not personally. I said, I know of him. He goes, you know how many people he killed? It's like he killed 6 million Jews. At least. I said, dad, did you, did you miss out on history class 40 years ago? <laughs> and he just went into this, like he just started studying things about Hitler and, and all this and all the crazy stuff he did. I'm like, oh my yeah, I, yeah. Uh, I, I That's knew wild. This, but thank you. Thank you for this uh, history lesson at 5 a.m. Man, before before that day, he was doomed to repeat history. Mm. Good thing he learned. Mm. Thank you. So, Andrew, my question for you is, did you go to a turkey bowl? I did not. I was sound asleep during the turkey bowl this year <laughs> because I've accepted that I am old. Last year when I went... No, <laughs> I'm that old now. <laughs> I uh, I know I noticed last year whenever I played like one game, what honestly happened was I was like, yeah, I'm gonna be in this for the long haul. We're gonna be here for like three hours, boys. I don't got nothing to do till like two in the afternoon, and it was like eight a.m. Bro, I went in. I played one game. I faked the phone call that my cousin needed me to come pick him up and left because I was exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> and I was there with my cousin actually, so that was kind of funny. My other cousin. <laughs> what is a turkey bowl? Like call me. So every year on Thanksgiving, it's like a running tradition for like millions of guys in the United States to really? get up early while usually while your significant other is like starting to get things ready in the kitchen, and all of you go out and play tackle football that morning and then like you come six, back seven around. o'clock in the morning yeah interesting i thought i really yeah. i expected this to be bowling so i'm 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 impressed no it's just a just a football game a lot of the college games are called bowl games so that's yeah. why it's called the uh, turkey okay. bowl so makes yeah. sense i get you but uh yeah so i did not go this year i didn't even think about it to be honest because i am old i get and it I'm lazy I'm i am too. fat You're and just i a little older i hurt yeah i hurt all the time now Maybe if I like lose weight, but that's not going to happen either. So I feel the same. 
I'm glad game. you feel the same because you're always the one who's like, you should go to the turkey bowl. And I'm like, I'm literally doing this for you, Josh, because <laughs> I'm just exhausted every time I do this anymore. <laughs> well, you can see that I still asked you if you went, so I'm still keeping you accountable. Oh, I, I know. I actually, <laughs> this year, the only reason I even thought about it was this year, I think it was the day after Thanksgiving last year, you had posted something about going to the turkey bowl and it showed up on my feed. I was like, huh, how about yeah. that? I didn't even I think about that this year. Uh, my memories too on Facebook. That's it. Well, my Thanksgiving yeah. went all right. Did you eat good? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We had. Uh, oh. I don't even remember. I think on on the day we had Thanksgiving meal with my wife's family, and then we did took you a not little... eat everything you said you didn't want to eat? Of course. Why would I eat things that I said I would like removed from Thanksgiving? I don't know. Maybe somebody's like. Nathan, Change try this. And you're like, no. And like, no, no, no. Come on. I worked hard on this. Try it. <laughs> I did eat the green bean casserole. I, it was pretty good. Beans, 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 tomatoes, potatoes, ham, brains. Yeah. The old Thanksgiving traditional song now. The old did you gotta be played every year. Yeah, I made Love gravy it. this year. It was good. Nathan, did you eat gravy? No, why would I eat gravy? That's, oh, you're crazy. Somebody slap um, him. So, listen, we're not listen. That was neck. this was for last episode, not this episode. I mean, we're talking about Thanksgiving. It's still technically the same thing. Yeah, yeah but we're not bagging on my up. old my opinion from back then. Is your opinion still valid? You said you're going to take turkey. Was out. it ever valid? Well, I mean, it's still trash. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's why he's going to Everybody yeah. has an opinion. Yours is just wrong. No, I get that. Yeah, agreed. No, I agree. Oh, well. um, yeah, no, it was good, though. We drove the six hours to Pennsylvania and then six hours back. And between that, we saw family. And that was always nice. And um, I saw my mom and I actually I showed her all of the the intros that we did specifically about uh, her. And she seemed <laughs> she got a kick out of that. Um, I don't think she gets the YouTube too much, but she, uh, I think has since listened to part of it. And then the only thing I've heard from her so far is her wanting to vomit because I think Andrew was just talking about and describing his poop. So that, yeah. went well. and Andrew, I have to say, I don't know if you said this on an episode, I think it was before an episode, but I started, I just like had one of the, like I, I opened one up for some reason and I played one of them. And my, mm-hmm. the first thing my mom said was, I love Andrew's voice. Hey there, Mrs. Wheatley. <laughs> this is for you. <laughs> I have I to say that because you specifically stated that you don't like your voice, but it's not, it's just, that's this just a true. you thing. I, I, th- I think you have a nice state. voice, but that's, you know, I'm heavily attracted to you. So there's that. What's up, Josh? Yes. Andrew turned Aunt Jamie mm-hmm. off of the podcast because oh. the one she decided to listen to, Andrew was talking about poop also. Oh my gosh. So both of our Good. moms, well, not his mom, <laughs> but the other the, the other other mom that's not really our moms won't even listen. And then my mom, I don't know if she's not going to listen, but the poop has been turning off the old ladies, that's for sure. This podcast older, is Older, older, older ladies, part. older ladies, not old ladies. Oh my gosh. Well, they definitely aren't listening now because we're ageist. Yeah, Thanks, weren't. Nathan. Yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> well, we're also <laughs> sexist because you said dudes only for the turkey bowl. No, dudes is not. That's not a male term. That's for boys and girls. Yeah. Haven't you ever heard of Aerosmith? He's a dude. She's a dude. We're all dudes. Come on, bro. It's very Just like we're all bro dudes. Dudes. <laughs> apart from apart from all Thanksgiving right. though and seeing my family and stuff that went well it was cool it's all good you know good fun good fun time long drive uh we decorated my wife's classroom for for Christmas a little bit put up a tree put up a little at least like paper or kind of like I don't even remember what they call it paper on the outside of the door and then she made like a little gingerbread house scene little gingerbread uh. village so that was nice. pretty cool. But apart from that, I don't know. I mean, it's been a pretty, I've been either editing or sleeping or uh, other stuff, but it's been pretty, pretty chill. How I feel much like else going if on? that is indeed, I believe that is indeed Ninja, correct? Your cat? Or is that not Ninja? Sarah has Ninja. I don't know. It's been a while. Okay. Well, either way, it looks like your emotional cat scarf. 
It's like your emotional support animal, but every time you get on the podcast, that cat just wants you. She always, she is the most cuddly cat in existence. For the audio listeners, I have a cat over my, draped over my shoulder. It's my black kitty Salem, and she loves us very much and always wants all the attention and cuddles. Yes, oh, yeah. Salem is great, and uh, since I mentioned it, shout out to Ninja, if Sarah yeah, ever watches. Ninja's a real, uh, he's, he's an OG, that's for sure. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, he's, he's still doing good. He's, he's getting up there in age now, but he's doing, he's doing a good job. I haven't seen him in a while. And I miss him, but let's not talk about that. Well, then he's doing his job as an injury. Good job, man. Yeah. Hey, the chicken in my background looks like somebody just told it. It's about to be dinner. Yeah. I think someone did. I think someone said that to all three of them separately and they're all just very concerned. Fuck! Anyway. Um, Andrew, did you have anything the else horse? to add before we get on to Josh's monologue? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, nah, I, don't, I don't think I really did much. Obviously, Thanksgiving went pretty well. Uh, the only things that really happened to me weren't like fun, I guess. I did have a couple decent, interesting things, but nothing too crazy. My, I had to replace a tire and a headlight within like days of each other, so that was fun. <laughs> that uh, my cousin. My cousin who was helping me with installing my headlight, because last time I had to do it, I had to like take out the entire headlight, and it was a big pain. And he's a mechanic, so he was like, yeah, let me come over. And then literally, since it was the opposite headlight, he was like, oh, this one's so much easier to get to. He just reaches his hand in, unscrews it, and puts the other one in. I was like, wow, it took a <laughs> solid hour and a half last time on the other one. So funny. I did that, and then we... Uh, uh, I got my tire replaced. Your father, actually, MVP to Nathan's dad, uh, changed my tire for me. My mom told uh, me that you had to go pick him up, right? Yes, yeah, I yeah. picked him up yesterday <clears throat> and dropped him off today. Nice. But yesterday, I was just like, that was whenever my headlight went out after, uh, you yeah. know, all that. So, So I was like, man, if it's not one thing, it's another. He's like... Oh, well, if you have the tire on the, because I told him about what happened. Basically, Walmart said, I'm not putting on your tire, chief. And I was like, wow, Oof. you're dumb. So so they gave me the tire back on the rim. And your dad was like, yeah, it'll take us 10 minutes. I was like, dude, I have a jack, but I don't have like anything to like, like a crossbar to take the mm. tire off. And I feel like an idiot. He was like, oh, dude, it'll take five minutes in the garage. I was like, let's go. So MVP, shout out to <laughs> Mr. Mr. Wheatley. Pretty great. Um, but then whenever we replaced my headlight, I was like, all right, well, like I'll hang out with you for the day since you're working on your friend's car, cousin. We both. So this dude who will not be named because I did not get his permission for this. Okay. But, but, uh, I was at my cousin's house after that, and he was like, man, I can't get this. You know, he was changing his friend's brakes, and he was like, it should have only taken like a half an hour. I broke two of my tools trying to get this brake off, and I was like, well, what in the world happened? Apparently, this guy knew he needed brakes pretty badly, but decided to go on a road trip to like Florida or Georgia or something and then come back that week when he needed brakes or else his car could die. Mm -hmm. So... You know, they basically fused everything together. We had to get a like a welding torch to heat up the brakes, the brake pads what? and stuff and and smack them off because we both he had a uh, like a breaker bar. That's insane. And it's just just like a, a long piece of metal that holds the, the lug nut shape on it. Yeah. And so like he got it on there and he was like, oh, he, he's struggling and he's a pretty strong guy. I would say he's definitely stronger than me. Mm. And he was just like, he's like, man, I can't do it. He's like, you, you want to give it a try? I was like, sure. You know, so I tried, couldn't do it. We both, we both just stood up like, and just yanked on this thing together, would not move. So we had to get that welding torch to basically take it off. That's rough. And I was like, yeah, it won't give us any resistance if it's liquid, right? You know, <laughs> can't, can't be not ripped off. And he's like, we're not going to actually do it. And that's when I learned my cousin does trust me because he was about six inches away from me holding a, <laughs> a torch in his face, just working on a car. I was like, man. This is a different level of trust than you usually get with some people because I wouldn't trust me with a fire near my face. You know, <laughs> Intrusive thoughts are a thing, and they definitely happened. And I was just like, not that I'd ever do it, but I wonder how this would happen or what it's, this would look it's, like. It's just the fact <laughs> that you could. Yeah, it's exactly. In, and I was like, I have It's the in power. the realm of possibility that you could just move your arm in the right spatial dimension that it would it was blow creepy. your friend's face off. Like I... I hated the fact that I felt like I could do that. I think that's normal. And that it crossed my mind. It's not but, necessarily yeah. good, but it's normal. Ah! Yeah, true. Goodbye, emotional scarf. 
my cat left. But that's that is pretty much the extent of interesting things that happened today. Enough. I got I did find out that uh today the GameStop homies that listen to our uh, podcast. <laughs> They're they're the real ones now because one of them was like geeking out with me the other day um, when I was talking to him. And he's like, dude, I love the fact that you like One Piece. Also, I have no one to talk with about this show. <laughs> That's great. And I was like, yeah, man, I love it. And he's like, yo, I get a FaceTime while I'm pooping to bring that up again. Mm-hmm. You know, for, for those ladies that don't like it, poop, 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 round and brown. It's poop. But. Anyways, he, he FaceTime me like sometimes. Okay, but uh, he was like, "Hey, I got just got these in, and it was like one piece trading cards." He's like, "We only have three of them, and they're on the back for you to purchase." So <laughs> that's why I was late to the podcast today because I immediately <laughs> drove there and got them and came back. Hey, thanks as guys. As as we've brought we've called you out so many times, and now you're out here making one of our podcast members hey. late. Hey, why don't they talk to GameStop about sponsoring us? <laughs> I've, we've tried that. I've I've already been putting my tentacles in that. You do but, a lot of sneaky things behind the scenes we don't know about. I feel like that's that's the idea for someone and, who doesn't even yeah, listen to so, the podcast. So shout! I don't listen to. I told you I don't listen to myself talk, man. It's freaking weird. <laughs> I'll put out a but, cut uh, that's shout just out. our voices. Sorry. Shout out to Steven and Chad. They're the homies. Shout out Thanks. to Wade because he watches too. Thanks, Steven and Shout Chad. out to, uh, I don't think Liz has listened yet, but she should. And uh, a non-shout out to Tim for being a jerk. Mm. Is he the one who didn't clean the... <laughs> He's the one who hasn't watched, and so oh. I don't like him. Who's the one who didn't clean your air fryer? Oh, Dylan. Oh, Dylan. That's okay. That's not my problem. Not my problem anymore. It's uh, some <laughs> random AAA tow truck guy's problem. Dylan, Fair who enough. borrows an air fryer? All right, we're over that. Cooks like three hundred taquitos. I think Who's over it? I'm not over it. Hundred taquitos. Oh. Hey, it was a family pack, so I'm pretty sure it was like forty. But it's still oh, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, so that's that's. I'm all caught up. How about you, there, Josh? We've got forty five minutes till the podcast is over. So that's how much time you have. Yeah. Um, I'd like to preface this with I have two questions at the end. Yeah. <laughs> so the first thing that happened is I we went to my dad and stepmom's for Thanksgiving, Oof. ate there, and I was like, we're not gonna have leftovers if we go over there. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna have to cook. <laughs> That's accurate. A whole Thanksgiving meal myself. That's accurate. <laughs> Josh said there will not be leftovers. There will not be extra food. Therefore, I do not want to attend. I need leftovers for work. So That's I fair. made a ham, corn nice. pudding, green bean casserole, sweet potato casserole, uh, two things of cornbread, uh, cranberry sauce, gravy, stuffing. Oh, I was going to say, don't say it, man. Um, not stuff. So everything came out pretty good, but I, so what I did is I made every single side dish first. So I, I cooked the cornbread. It was done. Then I made all the side dishes, got them ready. You know what that means, don't you? What? Since you were the one cooking, that means that Megan needs to now attend the Turkey bowl every year since you're cooking <laughs> Thanksgiving. Well, technically it's the day after Thanksgiving. This is the law. <laughs> No, technically it was Saturday. But anyways, I, uh, (laughs) (laughs) sun's out, guns out, baby. (laughs) Yeah. So the ham had to be cooked at 325, but all the side dishes had to be cooked at 350. Mm -hmm. So Megan was like, just put everything in together. I'm like, "Mm, okay. So we put everything in together, and it was taking forever to cook because it was 25 degrees colder than what I needed. It was crowded, yeah. So I was getting impatient. I was getting worried. Things were getting messed up. But slowly you could see things come together. So the sweet potato casserole was about done. And the directions were pull it out, top with marshmallows, put it in for 400 for three minutes. Now, the recipe I made was just plain sweet potato casserole, which was delicious, with the marshmallow. But my wife wanted this uh, 
It had flour, brown sugar, sugar, cinnamon, crumble on top, the, like melted on top of it. So I had that, then the marshmallow. Well, I was like, I'll just use the broiler since I can't get the oven up the 400 degrees because oh. it's in there. So no. I was like, I'll put it in the broiler for like 30 seconds, pull it out, it'll be perfect. Put it in, walk to the fridge, say, hey, babe, pull it out real quick, please. She opens it, I pull it out. It is a solid brick of black. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I was like, no, oh, man. I was so mad. Like, everything was coming out good. And she's like, no, no, no. We can fix this. We can fix this. <laughs> no lie. She peeled the whole entire burnt piece of marshmallow off. Like, just. And underneath was beautiful melted marshmallow. Good so, job, impressive. Megan. Lifesaver. I'll try to get a picture if, if we want. The, the second thing, yesterday we're in the kitchen and I made Cajun blackened uh, steak and shrimp Alfredo. Hmm. And while cooking, at, I was at the kitchen island. Everybody was in the kitchen. And I can see through the kitchen into the dining room and into the living room. And past the living room is the front porch. All I saw when I looked up, and I don't know why I looked up, was someone taking a picture with their flash on through my window of the living room. Oh, boy. I set everything down. I said some expletives. Okay. And I said, who is that? And I ran at the front porch. And everybody's like, what's going on? What's going on? And I ran to the porch. I opened the door. And it was an Amazon person taking a picture of the, the package that they were. <laughs> the king I bet he had a heart attack. Overreacting. So I'd be terrified so if Josh just came barreling out of the house. With no shirt on, just running. Who are you? you gotta, like, all, it's pitch black outside. I look up and all I see through my window is the flash of a camera going off. <laughs> So at least I know my fight or flight senses are like, I'm ready to fight, fight. bro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That other guy better have flighted, man. Oh, hey. Wait a second. (laughs) And it's been adjusted. I'm wearing a tank top. (laughs) What is this? Are we having a lunch break? (laughs) I'll eat it later. It's still hot. Hey, baby. When you said it's hot, were you referring to the food or your wife? Got him. Well, he said, oh, both. Yeah, that's the right answer. That is the right <laughs> answer. It's the only answer. Thank you. You're oh, welcome. <clears throat> that wasn't for you. It's a homemade sesame chicken with fried rice. Dope. Uh, so my son's birthday was this week. Mm-hmm. And he got the experience opening packages. How did that go? Now he thinks every package that comes to the door is his. Nice. I like it. He started stealing packages that were from my mom. And he would (laughs) run through the house and goes, mine, mine, no, mine. So now we have a little package thief that lives with us. A little package gremlin, box gremlin man. (laughs) And my wife saw this cactus. It looks like a cactus in a planter and it dances and it repeats everything you say. Yeah, I've seen that. She's like, we got to get this. We got to get this. So she bought it for him, gave it to him for his birthday, and he's playing with it. She told me that he yelled and argued with it for an hour and a half. He That's was, amazing. She said at some one point he was screaming at it because it was mocking him. <laughs> so it's it's been an eventful two weeks. But nice. Sounds like it. I have I have two questions. We cannot do them. But they're just things over the two weeks that I've thought about. Okay. What created the first straight edge that went on to make all other straight edges straight? (laughs) Like, if you were to go to the craft store and buy a ruler, okay? Okay. What made that straight edge on the ruler? A piece of equipment, right? The Lord did. Next question. Okay. I don't know if that's how that works, Andrew. I'm going to veto that. You can't. You are you vetoing God? I will take this up with him right now. No. 
<laughs> We're good, Chief. Josh, I, yes. is, is this a real thought experiment? Because yeah, well, it was my thought I is, about. I don't know where, I don't, listen, I don't know who the, the old ancient one of the straight edges are. However, I'm sure, like, if you needed something to be the model for everything that came after, like Jesus, then you would need to make it first. So someone must have done it by hand. That That's the only way, right? That's- Someone just That's did it perfectly by hand. Well, they just spent a lot you, of time working and making something that you can then use to make the future things, right? <laughs> if you get a ruler at some point, like, okay, you take a ruler, you put it on a piece of paper, you draw a straight line. Okay, when that ruler was crafted in the the shop, wherever it was made, the warehouse, the factory, some equipment made that ruler straight. Mm-hmm. So whatever cut that ruler to be straight... Well, how did they get that cutter to be straight? What did they use to measure other machinery? This stuff's been around a long time. I mean, I feel like we're just going to go into an infinite conclusion of what came the chicken or the egg, you know, of making something straight. Nah, that's just technological innovation over time. Like people just got like, better at it and they just started making machines, morning, but they used the tools for line. And they're like, this is what we use from now on to no, measure straightness. I doubt it because usually these things don't happen first try. <laughs> usually it's a lot of a lot of time and innovation. Some and like caveman was just it. like, yeah. He was just like, yeah, this lays really flat. I like. And they were like, this is going to be straight. Because when it, go, when it leans like this, it's gay. I'm not right. sure you're getting the prompt. <laughs> I think you might happy. be out somewhere else. Happy. <laughs> it is happy. These are happy lines. This is a sad line. <laughs> That's fair. My second question is who created such a dark game known as Hangman? Waldo from Where's Waldo? <laughs> okay. That's why we were That'd finding him. We were trying correct. to find him because he did such a terrible thing. And when we found him, we hung him. Yeah. I mean, I can look up like who first created hangman. It was probably cave paintings though. Like does someone sit there and like, Hey, let's play a word guessing game where you lose by hanging somebody. All right. So yeah, it looks like, like the, it a, do we want an answer? Or do we want to just sit with? Yes. Mystery? We want an answer. We want an answer. So apparently the actual origin of the game Hangman is unknown. It's apparently have been believed to have been originated in Europe in around the 17th century. The game was played when a prisoner facing death demanded the right of words and life, which looks like it would be a whole big thing to get into. Um, But so no one really knows exactly who started it, but it was Europe 17th century. And if it was 17th century Europe, it's very likely that that's uh, that's linked to witchcraft and like. It's probably really like, let's hang the witch and make a game out of it. Very I possible. bet it was North Korea. <laughs> Why? <laughs> no, hold on. Sounds like something. I'm okay with this. I'm okay with blaming things on North Korea. <laughs> <Okay>. Gaming news. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> this <laughs> week. <laughs> Is that... I'm never no. Oh, are no, we adding it. anything that's else? The that's the one for today. That's the one for today. What's that's the, the one air for today? Horn. It's Josh. Okay, I like that. Cool. So, uh, we had two articles this week, and two they were both about Grand Theft Auto. I'm so sorry. They were both about Call of Duty. So I said I'm not doing this one. I'm going to do this one, and then I found two others. So, uh, Ooh, first fancy. one here is about Call of Duty. Call of Duty devs finally comment on skill based matchmaking issues. So I guess before this, they had not really commented on it, but it looks like that Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 that came out on November 10th uh, has had some issues other than, you know, all the people review bombing the wrong Call of Duty 3 because they made two games called the exact same thing and think it's okay. I'm not bitter. I don't even play Call of Duty, so I really shouldn't even comment on it. But uh, basically, uh, they've had uh, some issues with their skill-based matchmaking system for those who 
are listening to this podcast and somehow don't know much about video games for some reason, maybe one of our moms, that's fine. That's okay. But I will explain that basically when you play a game and you are trying to play a game with someone else over the internet, what it will do is generally these days, there's some kind of algorithm that will set you against other players at a similar skill level in the game you're playing. So they'll try to make it so you're not coming against like the best player in the world if you're not very good at the game. So that sort of thing. So games these days, especially it's better when there's a bigger population playing the game because they will uh, have more people to choose from. Because when you go to enter, I want to go play Team Slayer and Halo, then it'll say, OK, and then it'll look for other people currently searching for a match in Team Slayer. And it'll be like, OK, I'm going to match you with this guy who has a similar win rate or similar KD ratio as you or something like that. I don't know exactly how it works at the nitty gritty level, but uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, the one that came out this year, is had some issues uh, with that uh, worse than I think other ones in the past. And uh, I guess the SBMM, which is what they call the is what basically the what they call the skill based matchmaking. Um, it's used in the ranked and casual playlists, and a lot of players feel like it should only be in the ranked system, that sort of thing. But um, they're finally actually, you know, speaking out about it and uh, hopefully going to address that for the people who are interested in the game. Um, Josh. Andrew. Andrew. That's me. Do you know what skill based matchmaking brings to mind? What? That charity flag football game. Why does. The, oh, yeah. Because you guys got <laughs> destroyed. <laughs> That was not skill-based matchmaking at all. Nope. Their all first right. team they went up against won the whole thing, and they they demolished that team. We so went for fun. The team we played is a team that goes around all of PA and makes like money tournaments. Winning tournaments. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. It, it was fun. Skill-based matchmaking doesn't work so well in real life. Oh yeah. Yeah, you're gonna come across some of that. You should have complained. Guy, th- guy threw a touchdown behind his back. Yeah, like a 35, 40 yard pass. It was pretty great. That's very impressive. All right, Article 2. Article 2 here. Article 2. Bethesda has started trying to convince unhappy Steam reviewers that Starfield doesn't suck. So, the creator of Starfield, uh, Bethesda, who created such iconic titles as Morrowind, as Oblivion, and as Skyrim, and also the Fallout series have created a game called Starfield, and it came out this year, and it's had a lot of uh, rough reviews, let's just say that. Um, and I don't, I've don't, i not looked super in-depth into the, all the issues of the game. I know it's had glitches, but they've always had glitches in their games, and people love them. So um, from my understanding, it's just they tried a new formula uh, from their games going into sci-fi, and it does not seem to have worked as well as they hoped. Um, but there have been a lot of negative Steam reviews. And uh, they've actually recently been going into those negative Steam reviews and writing responses to them, trying to convince the player, like, I know, I know, and like trying to convince the player that it's not as bad as they're making it out to be, which is kind of hilarious Um, because that's not going to accomplish anything. You don't. That's not the place. Yeah. And it's funny because it's like. (laughs) And I think this is something we could talk about at length at some point. I yeah. think it'd be a good topic for us, but sure. in the sure. in the realm of in the realm of like uh what's the word I'm looking for? Like subscription services for games. Because I think a major reason why that botched was because it was available on Game Pass Day One. Yeah. And it was free for those people for a while. I don't know if it still is or not. But like when you put something out for free you know, with what little business experience that I do have, you know, th- when you give somebody, a group of people, something for free, they will more, th- since they have no quote skin in the game, they're perfectly fine to judge it more harshly or to True. take it, you know, to not be appreciative of something. But if you even tell somebody, listen, this is a dollar ninety nine. Like you guess you just got to give me two bucks to attend this event or play this game. People are, much different in the way that they treat things and that's what i think happened to starfield because it was free for so many people everyone's just like oh this isn't as good as i was hoping it would be they don't feel like they had that premium because they didn't pay for it so they didn't have 
any sort of like attachment to it. Yeah. Cause I've seen, I've seen some gameplay of Starfield and I think it looks great. It looks exactly like I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be like Skyrim in space. And that's basically what it is because it's a Bethesda game yeah. and like people just are bums. They're bums. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't have a lot of skin in this game because I've not gotten it. I don't often buy just full $60, $70 games right out, right? Unless yeah. it's something I've been waiting for a very long time. Um, and even then I still haven't purchased the Halo Infinite campaign, which is funny for me because of how much I do love Halo, but I just don't like to buy games too often if they're a lot of money. But I have played Skyrim. I have played Fallout 4, which is funny because that's generally considered the lowest point of the Fallout series for a lot of people who love the games. I have not played any of the others. But I, I have an idea of the kind of games that they create, and what I've seen of Starfield doesn't look that bad, but I don't know enough about it and the experience people were expecting. Um, I'm sure there are legitimate reasons as to why the, these people are leaving these negative reviews, but what Andrew just said is is it, 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 it there's a lot of perspectives to look at when you come into these kind of things. And I'm sure it's a good and, game in, in some yeah. aspects. I just I don't know enough about it. And to adhere to the point I was trying to make that I got off track on, yeah. like... Even with that being considered, that is not in the developers. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? And not even in their defense, but like that is just not the right way to go about like trying to get someone interested in your product mm. whatsoever. Yep. You don't just be like, hey, someone's like, hey, this is a terrible cookie. And you're like, well, if you knew the amount of flour, sugar, salt, vanilla extract, and all the time I had to go through this process, maybe you'd appreciate that cookie better. <laughs> no, that, that does not work. That no. that makes you a meme nowadays. That's all that does. I will always say the absolute diamond standard for making a mistake and simply owning up to it and say it. fixing everything and making everything say, go from zero going. to a hundred. You know, it's no man's sky. It's hello games yep, and no 100%. man's sky. No Man's I, I'm not going to get super into this, but I mean, for those who don't know, No Man's Sky is a game that came out, I don't know, it was like 2016. It was like a few good few years ago now. It's been out maybe 2017, but it came out. Josh is aware of this because I think he got it or wanted to get it on release or something like that. We had talked about it <laughs> at one point, but um, this game came out and there was like years of hyping it up and talking about all this wonderful, incredible content they were going to have and all these things you're going to be able to do in space. It was going to be like it was going to be so big and then it came out and it had like not even half of the thing. It it was a, it was very, very bare bones. And a lot mm -hmm. of the stuff that was promised to have been in the game just wasn't. Now you were, you were told you were going to Longhorn and you got McDonald's. It was rough. That's uh, yeah, that's fair. Um, And the issue with that apart, I mean, the, the problem is like, there are so many different people in a game studio and like publishers and whatnot. Like these people, got themselves put on a track that they thought they could accomplish something in a certain amount of time and they could not. And they overpromised and they under delivered and they were forced by the studio to put the game out and it was nowhere near completed. So what these guys did is they, they, they shut down their presence on the internet and they just disappeared. Oh. And some people were like, Oh great. They're oh. just running with the money. And then eventually I think a few weeks or months go by and they put out like a patch. They add some stuff into the game. So some people were like, oh, wow, they're actually like adding some stuff. That's cool. But also screw these guys. And then they did that again and again and again. And now we're however many years in the future. And No Man's Sky has won multiple Game of the Year awards. These people just put their nose to the grindstone. They said, all right, we're just going to make the game how it's supposed to be. We screwed up. It's no, there's not really one person to point at that went wrong. It was just a it's series no of unfortunate. Fault. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> I hate you. And um, he, <laughs> he basically they just went from being the most reviled game on the Internet because of how it came out. And <laughs> he just peaced out and then went into just simply being like one of the most well fleshed out games out there. That's their consent. Still the people who purchased the game back then are still just getting free updates like every few months and they're just adding more and more to it. Um, so I just think it's very impressive what they did and they are just universally praised now for their game and people just kind of forget about how it started because it doesn't matter anymore because they just 
did the right thing. And they never went and just started leaving negative reviews or like going to negative reviews and being like, but, but, but wait, this, and this actually leads us into the third article, cyberpunk. They have a, they had a new patch, patch 2.1, which adds the Metro system scene in the very first trailer of the game. Cyberpunk is another game that came out. This was a much more recent. This was about 2020, 2021. This is, it Sounds was right, very yeah. recent. And at least compared to No Man's Sky. And it was it was less of a content issue, I think. There were some there was some content that they promised that they did not deliver on by the time it was released. Mm-hmm. But there were a lot of bugs, a lot of glitches, and most people oh, yeah. were not able to play the game to its full like graphical capabilities, and it just looked bad. Um mm-hmm. And this is also another game I've never I've actually played No Man's Sky and I think it's wonderful. Uh, I've not played Cyberpunk, but I've just I've looked into it and I've kind of had an eye on it. And from my understanding, they've done a similar thing to Hello Games did with No Man's Sky, where they've just been consistently putting out patch after patch after patch and they've been making it better. And now people generally just look at it and just think it's a great game, like it's a fantastic game. And so they've I guess that's that's this is a very quick and easy article, but they just talk about how Cyberpunk added the 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 Metro system, which is something that was going to be in the game from the beginning getting they over promised and it wasn't and they finally added it so that's cool for those who play the game but i just think that's another success story which is really cool it's also of- newest dlc that they released for it idris elba is in it so that's fun he's a good actor that is cool yeah okay and so they have keanu reeves and idris elba in the game which i never thought i'd say in my life that's an interesting combination I, i'm a little horrid mm-hmm. actually <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah that's about that any other uh, thoughts on there Article three. That, that was, article was three. that was Article Three. It was just a very what basic about the like Call talking of Duty about camping banning. Nah, I didn't want to talk about two Call of Duty articles this week. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I believe Josh I'm isn't used to that my camera won't reconnect. <laughs> that Josh... was gaming news. <laughs> Josh isn't used to being told no. Bars. I love your hair. Oh, what hair? I need to say this because I forgot about it. <laughs> okay, go. This is my no shave December hair. December. And oh, I will not have it. No, sh- no shave November, but it will not be here next week. Take it off. Let me see. <laughs> oh wow! So that, that's about a Show month it. of growth, huh? Yeah. You really have that like Friar Tuck hair. Like it's just. You have that, yeah. That is the, the nicest way I've ever I heard look like anybody say that. Pay fell off. Listen, that's going to be me eventually. I'm just, I'm, I'm a little bit slower at it. Listen, at least you got an initial in your hair. Right. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and well, that's the first time in an episode where separately each of us left. <laughs> this is accurate. Yeah, we're, we're, we're okay. Let's talk about Alan Wake, fellas. We, we oh, played episode such a great episode. I'm very interested to talk about this with Andrew because I feel like me too. Because all I from the beginning, how mad is Andrew still? I don't. I'm very curious how he feels. I feel like he still doesn't like the game much because I don't think he likes the gameplay, like the actual gameplay itself, which I'm not a huge fan of. We've talked about, but I'm not either. But we'll if it has a great story or an interesting story that does not immediately like episode one, okay. So what happened with episode four? Actually, I was uh, going to do a recap, but I don't know if I give us I the agreed. synopsis, bro. All right. Well, I didn't have this pulled up. Uh, Alan Wake, by the way, Alan Wake Two gaming news article Four. Alan Wake Two. I know it's only it's not game of the year from like anything, but it's this might this might not mean that much, but it won times game of the year. Um, I was going to say, it, I've heard it's already been nominated. So. I've heard lots of good things about Alan Wake 2, which is pretty sweet. But I watched it's be um, K3. Dr. Disrespect play. Yeah. And I guess there was a jump scare that happened, and he was like, <laughs> What was that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So basically, um, it, this episode begins. So the last episode, what happened is he was at the, uh, he, he was at Cauldron Lake. Which Cauldron Lake is that original place where that had the island that he had been on in episode one with the his house. wife, with the house yeah, on mm-hmm. it and everything, and then the island was like not there when he woke up in the car. So basically, in this episode, Alan wakes up. Um, the last one ended with him falling in the lake and looking up and a hand reaching down to grab him. And I expected that the next episode would begin with him like in the lake, or maybe right after where the where he's found some new person who can help him in his journey or something. And instead, it begins 
with Alan waking up and he's uh, he sees his wife in front of him. <laughs> that was a good one. Alan waking up. I like ah, that. Thank you. That, that was unintentional. I, I just I'm, oh. I'm, I'm so good at this. Um, and he woke up. Alan wake waked up and he <laughs> uh, looks up and he sees his wife and she's like, oh, it's just something. She's just like comforting him. And then. It, no, it's actually just it's Dr. Emil Hartman. Um, and apparently, supposedly, apparently. he's like, yeah, man, you're crazy. And you've been in this Bye. institute for a while. This uh, this Cauldron Lake Lodge, we take in crazy people who are artists, who are creatives. And I kind of help. I kind of help fix them in a way. It, it, that's not the word he would have used. He's an actually intelligent man. Um, so you follow him around and he shows you around and apparently you just forget every time because you're just, you are, your wife died. And he specifically says, your wife is dead. Yeah. I have to remind you that because you forget every time. And so you're waking up and this is, this is what this is. I actually had, I wrote down a note part here. of waking up is finding out your wife's dead. This is accurate. <laughs> um, no, it's not. So. Alan Josh looks very disappointed. Alan wakes up and this guy's like, yeah, uh, your wife's dead. You have schizophrenia and you're an insane person. And I've been taking care of you here. And you've just been writing to avoid coming to the, the to, to terms with the, the, your problems. And my initial thought was, well, if this is what, and because this is basically like what Andrew said from the beginning is what is shown portrayed in the beginning of this episode, more mm -hmm. or less that he's crazy and he can't take the, the loss of his wife. So he's been basically like writing her back into the story as if she was still alive. And like, he's just living in this fantasy world, which is how this episode starts off. And I'm like, okay, well then that's definitely not what's happening because that would be, that would mean this is the big reveal at the, the beginning reveal, of episode yeah. six, but there are two more episodes past this. So I was excited because I was like, they showed their hand way too early for that to be the actual story. I felt like that from the beginning. You were worried that it was just a basic, oh, he's crazy, and we find that out at the end. Mm -hmm. And I think this episode has really brought... I'm going to go back into the synopsis here, but I think he's. this episode has really brought out that there's actually something... I feel like there's actually something paranormal going on here, and it's not just a crazy man living well, in there the There it is, because I'll, I'll get into my yeah, notes. Yeah, we will, for, for sure. There was a part where I was like, I have a section after my notes where I yeah. was like, story questions I have episode four. And I started writing one, and then I went back into the game and kept playing, and it answered it. And I'm like, oh cool. my gosh, this changes the entire story <laughs> for me. Yeah, we'll definitely get into it. I'm just going to kind of run through this for those who... All right, run through. Do the running man. I will. So you're walking around with Mr. Hartman, and um, he's just telling you all about how you've been making this stuff up so you don't have to cope with your grief. Um, you, he gives you a tour of the lodge. You meet some crazy people. I listened to one guy go on a, like, actually three-minute rant hiding behind a, a, a couch. So that was pretty cool. Um, and there's, like, a storm upcoming and stuff like that. He finds these guys. They're called the Anderson Brothers. He talks to them. And they tell him that it's not a dream, that it's all very real and blah, blah, blah. But they're also people in a mental institution. So really, at first, I mean, I think the way that storytelling works, I knew that this could not be the actual truth because it happened in episode four of six. But they do are th at this point, you're still like wondering what's real, what's actually real and what's not and blah, blah, blah. Is he really just crazy? And he's just been here all this time. And so he talks to these guys they are two older Older, I say older, but they're like old. They're like 60s or 70s, maybe 60s. And they're just kind of crazy. One has like a big plush hammer and he's like always hitting people with it. But um, and they give him a note or like a letter or something. And um, he ends up like needing he's like, OK, I need to go to their farm. They're like two old rockers. And there's like this big stage at their farm and stuff. It's crazy. But I, we'll get into that. Um, but they tell him to head to their farm, which is near Cauldron Lake, and they can't remember because they have dementia, but they, they they can't remember why he needs to go there. But they told him he needs to go there. He so said he, the paper in his pants yeah. was giving him a rash. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. <laughs> I forgot about that. Um, So he goes back to his room. The doctor's like, Alan, you got to write. It's going to make you feel better. Blah, blah, blah. And so he was mm. worse than that. He was, was so much worse. That's when yeah. the story started changing. Cause he's like, right. You yeah. need to write you. Cause it, you know, things will change when yeah. I'm like, why is he like so awkwardly telling me 
to to go back on the typewriter and start. Yep. Like it was it, it was, was a little bit it was it was, it was odd. Um so he tells him to go to his room and right. So you go to your room, blah blah blah, and you're just like and he's he has he has like a thought, like you can hear his thoughts in his head at that time. He's like, Well, I'm not gonna write, but I'm gonna at least appease him. Um so at some point he hears like a ruckus downstairs. He's like, Oh, gotta go check. It was a ruckus. And so he runs down the stairs in this lodge and he sees one of the nurses knocked out cold on the ground with the Anderson brothers just challenging some male nurse behind like a staff office. And you take her keys. Oh, the Andersons yeah, tell note. Alan exactly the I stage is yours. Yeah. Seize your destiny. I also want to point out that I'm pretty sure there was dialogue that referenced one of those two old men knocked that lady out. And I find that kind of, yeah, funny. yeah. I think one of them, did. I assume the hammer guy, but I don't know. Um, <laughs> so Alan grabs the key and he runs to Hartman's office to get some answers. And he finds, um, well, actually Barry. he finds on the way to the office, you find Barry, you find Barry Wheeler, who's your homie and your agent, the real MVP, the real MVP. Oh my gosh, Barry. I did not like him at first. And now I love him. Um, so <laughs> he came to the lodge to try to take Alan away, but Cartman's goons like assaulted him and locked him up and blah, blah, blah. But, um, oh, but luckily, okay, this is important. Barry was able to protect Wake's cardboard cutout from them. And he's, he, he stole it from the diner with Rose, who was like obsessed with him and stuff. So I'm, that's what matters in this episode is that the cardboard cutouts. Okay. It's funny you mention that because I actually think that's going to be a plot piece later on. It has to be. Like there's a legit reason. I hope they so. made a big think about it at the farm. I have a little bit yeah. of a headcanon that Barry is behind some of the evil stuff going on and that he's actually not good. Crazy I hope crack it's not the case. I hope it's not the case because I kind of love him. Um, so, yeah, basically, you break into Hartman's office and you find stolen man- manuscript pages them. and a revolver and. Uh, Basically, your face off. Hartman like enters the room and tries telling Wake that he's slipping back into insanity. And Alan trains the revolver on him, and Hartman gives up. Blah blah blah. He said they should work together on this. Together we can create something wonderful. Alan doesn't listen. He tells Barry to get the car ready. They're leaving the lodge. But as Barry leaves, the dark presence asserts itself inside Hartman's office. So yeah, essentially the whole building now has like flying couches and um slime that hurts so yeah that's cool and you have to go upstairs and turn on some generator and like turn on the light to like knock them away so you can get out what's up alan was so dark just Mm -hmm. shutting him in the door in the room yeah it's true i mean that guy that guy is not like he's kind of a butthole so i don't know like he didn't even hesitate to say how many things just like shove the door shut and like he's definitely celebrity butthole for sure Mm. he is celebrity butthole and so he ends up uh, essentially gameplay. You have to like kill these evil couches and then you end up leaving the lodge um, and you hear like a scream from Hartman and then silence. So that's cool. Uh, so you flee the lodge as the darkness completely just tears it apart and then it starts to be possessing more objects and they start flying at you. There's a lot of flying objects in this in this one. So um, you're forced to tangle with Taken and Poltergeist inside a hedge maze and you make it past that. When he said hedge maze, I like snorted. I was just like, I did. I did. You too. Can't. I was like, bro, really? You're not going to just help me across the, the, fl- the freaking wall right next to me, dude. No, no. It You're going to make me. It gets worse. This is why I hate Barry when we get to it. Uh, it's so funny. He's like, hey, take my flashlight. Um, so you grab it from a, like the, the fence was locked. And so you had to go through a hedge. Beat maze, the fence with the goofy. flashlight or something. Run the car into well, the fence. Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> so basically the, the taken like absolutely destroys the, the thing, the, the lodge and it's coming after him. Um, so as they're driving away, uh, Alan tells Barry to head to the Anderson farm and, um, Alan also, you know, fills in Barry that Hartman and the kidnapper never had Abel Alice, but that she's trapped underneath Cauldron Lake. And uh, Alan is telling Barry this and their car gets hit by falling rocks and then they fall off a cliff and lovely. Oh, great. You guys are separated again. You wake up. You have no gun, no flashlight, Yay. anything like that. Worst part of the Yay. game. Um, that's my opinion. But it's my opinion. And so you're just like, well, crap. Um. I guess I got to run through this area and not get killed. And I have no defenses. So cool. Uh, Barry runs on ahead to the farm and he, no, what I actually loved is Barry ends up getting attacked by taken and he ends up killing him. And Barry is like in this now he's really in this now. 
because before yeah. I was like, is he is this idiot just gonna get himself killed? But now nah, he shines a flashlight in the guy, and he pops his head three times, and he, he and does he, it with the flare. Then he gets he does it with head. the flare, like, right? Yeah, yeah, I got some Rambo. <laughs> he was like excited. <laughs> um, so yeah, basically you end up. Uh, Barry runs to the farm to secure the area, and he leaves Alan. <laughs> he's still carrying the got a little weight cutout. He said the, the cutout's okay. I got it from the car. Yeah. Um, so Alan finds a flashlight eventually, uh, after you get past some dudes that you have to simply sprint past because you have no defenses. Do you, I want to talk about that part real fast because there is a generator. We'll get to it. We'll get okay, to it. That's fine. We'll it. get back into it. Cause this, this synopsis is almost over. We will get to it. That part made me mad. Mm hmm. Throwing axes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <laughs> he finds a flashlight after that section, after he's able to ev evade the Taken, and so he at least is able to slightly, like, slow them down. He can't shoot them, but he can slow them down. He finds a cabin, um, and actually he saw a car, a, like a truck, driving to it, and he thought maybe it was Barry, so he goes up to the cabin, finds a dude named Walt Snyder up, which he had, who, he's someone who had Walt actually Schneider. met Walt Snyder. He met in the, them in the jail. I don't remember what episode, but he was dying from wounds that was inflicted by Snyder's friend, Danny, who has now become a taken. So this guy is upstairs in the, the attic. You find him and uh, you end up finding Danny outside that building, which I, it wasn't obvious to me at first, but I, now that it, I, I'm reading that, I don't know how I didn't realize that. Um, But I guess the guy you fight like some boss kind of guy outside of it. And so, Alan then ends up going to the farm to end up on Anderson's stage. So they basically had a big stage where they would play their rock concerts when they were younger and not dementified. And um, you reunite with Barry on the stage. And this is the most ridiculous part of the game. And it was my favorite. But I also Me died too. twice near the end of it. And I was so angry by the end because it's a long section where if you if you make one stupid mistake and like three taken surround you, you're, it's just over. I, I think my issue was the very first time I wasn't using my flashbangs and stuff. I don't know what I was thinking. They're incredible. Um, and the, the, but regardless, you, you, you fight off this like taken horde that just keeps coming at you. And Barry's trying to a rogue lightning strike, like hits the stage and then gets all the lights and everything. working, <laughs> yeah. Like all the pyrotechnics and stuff. It's wild. And there's this like rock music playing from the speakers and you're just fighting all these taken on a stage with this blaring rock music around you. And it's such a different like tone from the rest of the game up to this point. And Barry's just yelling the whole time being like, all right, Al, you got this, Al. I'm working on these lights, Al. And then he's just like the lights keep turning off and he's trying to figure out, get them back on and stuff. And they help you dealing with breaking the shield on these taken and then you shoot them. But it was a fun addition to the game, but I ended up getting real mad because I died twice like an idiot because I just wasn't careful enough. I don't know what else. I didn't think it would be I yet as... again died to fall damage, so I feel your pain. <laughs> I, I don't know if I've died to fall damage. in the. Well, I think I've jumped off a cliff, but really you just kind of end up dying in midair when you do that. Okay, then yeah, reason. cliffs. cliffs have Fair enough. Me again. I've, I've yeah. fallen off a couple of times, but one of them was on purpose because I was mad. Um, So you end up so like I said, you're going to there, you fight the hordes of these guys with children with song... <laughs> So their band was called Old Gods of Asgard, which is absolutely incredible. And I want to name my kid that. Um, and it was one of their songs called Children of the Elder God that was playing in the background, which is pretty cool. Um, so you end up making your way through their, I guess, their grain silo and you destroy a hay machine and you finally enter the house, blah, blah, blah. You're trying to like find something that was left for you there from the Anderson brothers. So the message that the Andersons left was actually written in, in another song called The Poet and His Muse. And from that, Alan deduces that the Lady of the Light mentioned that this is, in fact, Cynthia Weaver. I'm not exactly sure who that is right now, but uh, I think so she was in the. Um, the diner. Oh, oh, OK. All right. I um, think she was the one that was like sketched out. Yeah. Mm. Um, gotcha. So. The last part of this was um, Barry like pr proposes to Alan that they shouldn't, they can't leave until sunrise anyway, so they might as well get drunk off the Anderson's moonshine. And I think that was a ridiculously stupid decision because of everything that's been going on. Why would you want to fight that drunk? But I'm not going to get into that. Not everyone's smart um, or make smart decisions. Just kidding. But the moonshine causes Alan to unearth a suppressed memory of the night Alice went missing, which is was very interesting because you pretty much play like that. You're like 
ghost, playing through his um, memory and yeah. you see him as a ghost, but you're like walking around in like an out of body experience. You're like standing higher up and you can't like run, sprint, jump, crouch, and you can't crouch in this game, but anything else, you're just walking and you kind of like see mm-hmm. everything that happened in episode one, but then you see what happened after. Um, so basically it's revealed that Wake thought Alice had drowned Jagger. Wait, had used his grief to take control. Wait, what is this written? It was real that a- oh, it's revealed. Sorry, that after Wake thought Alice had drowned, Jagger had used his grief to take control. Jagger is the creepy old lady who initially like mm-hmm. took you to this place in the f- or told you to go to this place in the first place. So she's been like controlling him with his grief. She manipulates him into writing a manuscript to release the dark presence and make it stronger. However, Alan had some awareness left and secretly wrote Thomas Zane into existence to use his light to escape. Thomas Zane is this dude that appears once in a while who's wearing a complete scuba suit with, like, mask and everything. I have so much to talk about. And he writes him into the story so that he can use him to show up and save him from making Mm -hmm. the Dark Presence stronger with his manuscript. And Zane, like... Wake escapes while the dark presence suppresses Zane and uh, throws him deeper into the darkness. And then Alan drives to safety, but then he loses consciousness from his week in the cabin and crashes because he was he spent a whole week in the cabin writing without eating or anything because of this old lady who controlled him. It was wacky. Mm -hmm. Um, That's when he wakes up in episode one uh, in the car. And uh, so he realizes um, when he wakes up after his night with Barry that everything that transpired is his fault. And to make matters even worse, Agent Nightingale has tracked him to the farm because of the noise the previous night. And after Nightingale remarks that Wake is going to pay for it, the episode ends. Wow, that is that's Indeed. that's there's a lot going on now. First question. The Anderson brothers, yes. were they the same old dudes that were at the diner that asked you to play the record? They were. Ah, I remember I that. Oh, that. see, I my brain has such a bad hard time making those connections. Yeah. I don't know why. They even they mentioned they're familiar. like, oh, I can't, I don't have good memory. I have this dementia or something. I've got so much to go into. First thing I have, he's going to the room while the doctor's talking. There's a whiteboard with what looks like a map. And then the, so when the doctor's like, follow me, I'm like, mm. hmm, no, I'm going to explore why you're Negative, gap. sir. Yep. Yep. I started That's going it. to every door That's I could to I see if it let me in. There's a whiteboard with what looks like a map, and I couldn't, I didn't really pay much attention to everything, but in the bottom right corner of it, it shows someone shining yep. a flashlight around a tree on a taken. Did all three of us mm-hmm. see that? Mm-hmm. Interesting. So, right there is when the story was started, like, to not add up. Like, wait a minute. Alan already said that we were drugged. There's a whiteboard with a map on it, and someone, like, trying to shine a light on a taken. I was like... So I started really thinking about things. The doctor said that we've been here before and we were going through another breakdown and Alice is dead. And he described everything that we've been fighting up to this point. And he, he was kind of like, uh, what's the, uh, is it forgetting Sir Marshall? Like every day they have, what's that movie? Every day they have to wake up. And like, yes. They're like, Hey, we're married. Here's a video to show we're married and been together. That that's what Alan was basically saying. Yeah. That, uh, or the doctor was saying that they were doing the part where you're trying to get out of the building. So before I get to that, did anyone scan the QR code? Yeah, nope. I walked up, uh, but I didn't scan it. Yeah. The QR code took me to a page with a GIF and text that read constipation. That looks painful. I don't understand it. Is there something I'm more missing? poop jokes? It was like a know. GIF of some dude and it said constipation. That looks painful, but painful was written P A Y N E F U L. Wait, P- I wonder if these are the same people that made Max Payne. That might be a reference. Probably is. Max is my Payne guess. Payne and Alan Wake. I could be wrong, but that's just a guess. Nathan, don't go towards the light. Whatever. He is. I don't know. I don't know. Right. Here's where I really started getting upset. The mm-hmm. part where you're trying to get out of the building and that possessed ball is ramming into things. I couldn't figure out how to defeat it. It destroyed me twice. It never killed me, but it got me to like a yeah. little beard hair of health left. <laughs> like the first time you're just staring at it and it's like, I'm in a hallway. The doors are all locked. I can't like, boom, just plows me yeah. over. I'm like, 
Well, this was great. And the second time I'm like, okay, now I figured out I got to stand in front of the door, let it blow through the door. And that's what I did. But when I tried to dodge, he like didn't really dodge and it just plowed through him into the door. So I was like, oh, if I die and I have to fight this over and over again, I'm I so only mad. got past it accidentally because I was like, up, oh, up, oh, the door broke while I'm, my body broke. So I'm going to use that to my advantage. Yeah. I, so it just um, kind of made sense annoying. to me because when you first find the ball, it runs into a door twice and breaks it. Then I was like, oh, there's another yeah. door. I can't open it. Ball break door. I didn't have trouble oh, with that so spot. I don't know. I, I just I couldn't I move out of the way of it. Yeah, it just yeah. Kept fair enough. Me. Fair enough. The rock in the maze that said, "Don't trust Emil." Yeah, that is it one thing. Emil, um, Emil Doctor Emil Hartman. Okay. So uh, there was him. there was at least two. So for those who might be listening to this but haven't actually played the game or not playing long, anything like that. Your flashlight, while you're walking around with your flashlight, there are little, like, spots, areas you'll come across sometimes where it's, like, paint that only appears when there's light on it. So when you shine your flashlight over it, there's, like, paint and things written in paint. A lot of times they take you to hidden caches with ammo, and sometimes they just, like, write things. And I, I don't I don't have really have a theory. I've not thought too much as to, like, who's supposed to be writing these. But this, they had, like, twice where you it was calling into... It could be the light. Because that's the only thing that makes sense. I feel like it's still him. He's writing it to himself because yeah. he's already written himself in the story. I so. mean, that's fair. That would make sense. Like, kind of like a flashback. Of, like, don't forget to check over here. He's a little secret way to find. Yeah, that was up. that was a huge uh, thing that they were pointing on in this episode. Near the end was just that, you know, he's realizing that he wrote himself into the story so that he could save his wife and. Yeah. You know, he wrote Thomas Zane into the story. And he and, somehow he yeah. it's something to do with this place. I don't know. But somehow he is like making everything happen. But it's not just a crazy thing. Like he's actually causing yeah. these events to happen by his story. I'm waiting for us to come to some moment where uh, we realize that the person that we hit with the car was ourself. Is kind of where I'm going with this in the very beginning. All right, of the all right game. fair enough. Um, but yeah, so. All I was going to say is that there's like two different sections in this episode that I found, at least, that were like calling into question Emil Hartman, who's the guy who said oh, yeah. that you are crazy and he's taking care there's of There's two of them. Um, so, yeah, it said like not to trust him and stuff like that. And one of them said that he he, I got it he did down. this or he. OK, Josh has it. <laughs> uh, as soon as you come out of the maze, you fight the the orderly dude. Mm-hmm. Um, I died. Because oh. I didn't realize I was fighting birds at the same time. And the that was annoying. Yeah. Crashed me. Yeah. They don't do that much damage, so I didn't focus too hard on them. I mostly focused on him because I figured he would kill me faster. I tried to focus on the birds when they showed up, but it was like they, they were coming from different directions. It was a pain. It didn't kill me, but I got pretty low, I think. You come around the corner. He's like, you take one pill in the morning. You take two pills in the evening. I'm like, what? <laughs> Yeah, what when I, w- I had to look up the name because I wasn't sure if I was right, but Emil gave me huge Benny Hinn vibes. If you know who Benny Hinn is, Benny. you ever see like those? Uh, you ever see like a TV program or infomercial, and there's this dude who waves his white jacket over these oh, people, no. and they just all fall. He gave he gave oh. me such Benny Hinn vibes when I first saw him. I was like, yeah, this is this guy's just a huge quack. That's got to be it. Oh, and boy. he was. Oh, televangelist. Yeah. Now you know who it is. Yeah. You had to look it up. I get it. Um, I got an achievement for killing two taken with a single shotgun blast. Nice. I think I got that last episode. I'm not sure. I think so. Uh, uh, the only uh, achievement that I remember getting this episode was uh, uh killing f- 20 taken with means other means. than shooting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got that yeah. too, and I got 50 hunting rifle kills. I don't know if I got any of those. I, I didn't get the hunt. I've used the hunting rifle once. It's my favorite weapon. I use. Yeah, I, use I, I like to use right? the different weapons whenever I have them, and when I run out of ammo, and another one comes around, I'll switch to it. Oddly enough, I think I was just trying to be too quick because I did. I found sniper. I found hunting rifle ammo, but I did not find a hunting rifle. So I think I just walked right past it and didn't even notice. Yeah, I don't remember exactly where it was, but I, I the prefer it. Hunting rifle personally. was up in the tower. Mm. But uh. Another glowing sign on the wall said Emil made Tom do it. Mm. Mm-hmm. Who's Tom? I'm assuming Tom is sane. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Um, I died twice and almost the third time because Barry shut the gate and locked us out. That's <laughs> what I was telling you that I hate Barry now. Because he's like, the, the take were coming, so I slammed the gate shut. Now the key doesn't really fit in there. And I immediately almost died like the first time. I'm like, <laughs> okay. So the second time, I was like, I'm just going to run away. I died. And the third time, I almost died. I got like an axe thrown up my back while entering the light. Yeah. And I think that's what saved me. And then I got out. And I'm like, Barry, I want to hit you. You knew we were trapped behind here. Like, just go sit in your car, dude. The <laughs> I had a few times in this episode where I almost died and it was very stressful. But the only times I actually mm. did was, was during that concert thing. See, that's. We'll get into that, but. Um, the, here's the part you wanted to talk about. I almost didn't make it through the woods after the car went off the road. Because you have to run through there. And coming down that hill, I saw the generator. And I'm like, I see the green light. I'm going to run the generator. When you get and halfway like, there. Know, yeah. They, the camera they zooms spawn. back and like three or four or five guys show up behind you. I tried, I think, three different, four different times to as, as quickly. So I was speed running this game. As soon as I mm-hmm. wake up from death. I, I No, why am I saying I didn't die? I died at this part because I wanted to see if it was possible. And it feels like it was like not I would wake up from or like wherever the checkpoint was immediately sprint at the generator as quickly as humanly possible. Use all my sprint to get there. (laughs) Get hit in the back of the head with a throwing axe. Like every time it did Mm -hmm. not let me turn on that generator, which would have turned on the light to give you make you safe quicker because it would have killed them when they walked into it. I didn't die there. I died because I I kept trying to get the generator and then they would just catch up to me after they hit me with the axe and I couldn't make it to the actual next checkpoint. The generator just felt like it was just like there just to throw you off because I could have easily run. And that's the first time I think we've encountered that in this game. Because we didn't have a weapon or a flashlight to deal with them. Yeah, because I ran to the generator, went to try to use it. They kicked me off of it and I'm Mm -hmm. like, okay. so I ran back the way I came further Mm -hmm. to get away from it, tried to get them to chase me. And I'm like, all right, and now I'm going to run to it. And they, they they threw that stuff at you, the axes, the hammers, yeah. and I'm like, I can't get this. So I just, I took off. I just kept running to the next one. Yeah, it feels like it was a red herring. Like, it didn't feel like it was actually useful. I think it was meant to just throw off your mojo. Because mojo. all you really have to do at that point is just run past the next hill, run up some stairs. And, and there's another one. Yep. Yeah, and then yeah. you are you hit, like, a, basically the, the checkpoints in this game you walk under these these like street lights that are on and then it's it's all light and the monsters can't enter them and when you enter it checkpoint hits they disappear so it's like that's all you had to get to and i was a little bit annoyed at that part <laughs> cuz i really wanted yeah. to get the oh. generator to work but that i wasn't going to spend 10 hours hoping maybe one day they would miss with their axe so yeah so the part you start running through where the, the bear traps are i was running through the woods and got tag teamed by three taken <laughs> the bear traps the are so time, dumb like why are they there? i got I was avoiding them all. Okay? Yeah. But I, I got hit the first one because I'm an idiot and I thought it was a manuscript. Page. Why did you even have the problem? Like as soon as you come up to the yeah. bear traps, the light dude talks to you. And mm-hmm. I ran to the light dude. And this is where the story uh-huh. starts to change for me. I didn't see anything but a, a claw in the light. And I'm like, mm-hmm. is the game messed up or did I like just see like a mechanical claw? And as soon as you interact with him, you see the bear traps. Hmm. But I got hit by a three taken that pushed me into the bear trap all at once, and I insta died. That's hilarious. It was like three, <laughs> boom, bear trap, dead. There's no getting out of that. No, and I was like, what the heck? I just like a tag teamed and forced <laughs> to die. So that, that that woods part was a pain. Um, the rock concert standoff was awesome. I got an achievement for beating it without dropping down to a low health state. I did too on I'm my right third try. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, "Hey, all right, that's not what happened." But what I, well, something I did want to say um, when we enter the farmhouse, I you the find rock concert. yeah, that was insane. Um, but before you get to the farm and you enter like the. Oh, the the one cabin or whatever and there's like the dude screaming for his life upstairs and I'm just walking around the first floor just meandering looking for any items I can pick Me up too. I love it it's I'm so like that funny. guy's dead he, it's like I a literally long said that out loud. I was like yeah, he's dying so I'm why did we all do the same thing but I found a coffee thermos so um, yeah 
because we're all gamers and we're like, well, yeah. this is a point of no return. Like, it don't matter. We're not meant to be able to save this guy if we get up there quickly enough. So it doesn't really yeah, matter. Sure. It's I not real life. Thing. I was like, nothing's going to change <laughs> if I get up there now or like 10 minutes. Um, and at one point I was fighting. This just made me happy. I was just like fighting. I was near like an ammo or like an ammo cache, one of those things. And like I was trying to get to it and I was running along like the edge of this cliff. Three taking come at me. So I start fighting them and one of them just falls off the cliff. And I was happy. I heard, you know, the sound that makes when they're like their dark shield breaks when you're putting the light on them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It like I heard that while he was falling and it was just, it was lovely. <sighs> so you you had trouble with the stage. I despised L- the moment that I saw it. I was like, oh, yeah, this is going to happen. Walk out of the silo. Right. And then the freaking tractor thing. I'm like, great. We have to fight flying furniture. We have to fight flying cars. Now I have to fight a possessed like corn harvester. Yeah, this is this is ridiculous. Yeah, this is ridiculous. Yeah, I was like, this. I don't like this at all. I did. (laughs) Well, what do you guys think about having to fight the excavator too? It just started throwing hay bales at you. Yeah, that that did nothing. That I don't even remember that. Yeah, that wasn't even a problem. Right as you're driving. (laughs) Come on, guy. Get out of here. I don't go all day. Well, um, I expected to do more. And I'm like, it's like, why is it like hitting the ground on the opposite side of me? And then it turned and it freaked out and hit the hay <laughs> bound. I was like, whoa. And then it, I destroyed it. So at that part with the harvester where you basically you get out of the silo and Barry's still stuck in there. You have to like open the door from the outside to get him out. I don't know why Barry couldn't have just followed you. But Listen, let's not get into that. Um, no, 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 no. We're getting into that. No, we that's will. no reason Barry made me mad. <laughs> But when we have to fight that harvester, I didn't really have trouble with it. Not really. I didn't either. I just kind of ran to the side I and I kind of like, I, yeah, I like sides. St- well, if you messed up once, it's going to hit you and kill you probably. So that's why I can imagine it's not that hard. Yeah, I, didn't, I, I assumed it was oh. going to go slow and I just ran. And when I ran out of stamina, I didn't mm-hmm. see anything. And yeah, it does insta kill you. Let me tell you, it just ran me straight over. Oh. I got hit by it three times. <laughs> I got hit by it once and I was done. I don't think I got I hit think by it's because I was just like, straight in the middle yeah, didn't try to yeah. dodge it. I ran out to the side as soon as I, I saw got that was happening. <laughs> That's what made harvested. me so mad. You go through all of that, then you have to climb on top of a shed and jump off the shed. And then Barry's still locked in. I'm like, we just took an elevator to get here. Why couldn't you have just <sighs> gotten on the elevator? Yeah, well whatever. But and let's not and, and real quick, <sighs> speaking of that stupid elevator, first of all, why did I have to kick the door open for no reason? I found that kind of dumb. He's and just then melodramatic. I figured out the reason. I figured out the reason. If you look to the right, when you get down off of that elevator, you know what's sitting there? A chainsaw, my guy. I saw a that. straight up chainsaw. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm getting this chainsaw. And then they locked the door in place so you couldn't get out. I was like, this game deserves zero praise now. Will not let me get chainsaw. Zero stars. <laughs> well, they also had the chainsaw in the tree when you were walking in. Yeah, yeah as soon as you yeah, to, yeah, I saw that and I was like, I can't grab this. How sad. Um, when we leave that area and the harvester comes out and you're in that big old field and there's like some you're just in that huge field surrounded by a fence. I ran around that entire field two mm-hmm. or three different times because I didn't realize you were supposed to go in the place where that taken barged out. I even walked in there and I didn't see the ladder to get on top of it. I didn't, I see, didn't the see it. I just the prompt showed up and I was like, oh, there's a letter. I, I, I missed oh, that. I I, that didn't happen to me. I don't know. So I, I left that lucky. and I was like, OK, I tried running through all the fences. I was like, how the heck do I get out of here? I've got to save Barry. And I I ended up just like, OK, I'm gonna go back in here. I must have missed something. It's like there's a ladder. I was not happy about been that. Easier if he just took the elevator. I know, but, yeah, but Barry's a large man. <sighs> so he was just he couldn't fit on it. Yeah. So pretty much after after the cornfield, you walk into the house. You got to go turn the power on, which is some old glass fuse box where the fuses are in like the little screw glass. I'm like, this reminds me of Graham's house. And you go downstairs and music already starts playing. And for some reason, they're, they're like freaked out that music's playing. They're like, what is that? I've never heard music before. And then Alan was like, this is what we're here for, Barry, you idiot. I was like, ah, nice. <laughs> So then you go down and you play the record and then Barry's like, alcohol, let's get drunk. We've been through so much. And then that whole dream revisit thing was pretty cool. Really tied in the story. Mm -hmm. I didn't put any notes down for it, but I have questions. 
And one thing I wanted to note is, do you remember the very first time, episode one, when we walked into the house while our wife was still with us? Yep. There was a picture in that room. Okay, and if you walked up to that picture, it was of a dude standing on the pier in a diver suit. Oh, I don't know how you remember and that. And I always thought it was so weird. Like, what? why is that picture here? What is that? What does he have to do with anything? Mm. And now I know what it is. It's Zane. Yeah. So, the first question I have... Is, is, Zane, to, is he in a diver suit? Because for some reason, I thought it was an astronaut suit. It's I don't know, suit. because he doesn't have suit. hands. Okay. The claw that I was talking to you about okay. was his hands. Because when he comes in, he breaks through the wall or whatever at that one point. You can see he's got the claw. There's like little, they look like chip clips. Mm-hmm. And he just like grabs your uh, your story and then is like, all right, let's go. I think it's kind of like an older style diving suit. Like a though. real old one. But it's like one gotcha. with like the, the porthole in front and then two on the side for some peripheral vision and then one up here, but the rest of it is like all metal and it's all connected and it's gotcha. not like... Yeah. And his hands are probably encased inside, <laughs> so that's why he's got those hands. Yeah. The first thing I have written is, so the white light is a scuba diver looking thing named Zane that Alan wrote into the story that the woman in black forced him to write. Yeah. Why at the end of episode four does Alan wake up and say it's all his fault he wrote it? Um, my little sidebar I have with that is Jagger, the woman in black, made Alan write a horror story while he was on vacation, and it gave her power and wrote Zane the white light in to help him. Was his wife captured before or after the story? <clears throat> Because if, if if she was captured and then he was forced to write the story to save her, is he just taking survivor's guilt and blaming himself? I think she falls or, into the lake. Like, isn't that supposed to be what happened? Yeah, because he alluded to he alluded to there's something about the bottom of the lake. So, and the fact that he thinks she's still alive in the light in the lake, I think is what he said. The darkness so in the I, lake has her. Yeah, yeah. So I think they're in one of the future episodes. We're probably going to have to go there and find her or whatever. But I'm still under. I'm still operating under the assumption that she, in my theory, she's still. I'm gonna do a, throw a little crackpot theory out, and one of the yeah, episodes we need a button find, for crackpot theory. Well, you were supposed to be making sounds. I'm a horrible person. <laughs> I was also supposed to mess with business cards, but I didn't because I slept. Um, there you go. Well, Nathan has to finish the logo, but anyways. I'm thinking that at some point we're going to find some diver suit like that hanging up somewhere and we're going to use it to go to the lake. Makes sense. That that's would make a lot of very sense. Likely. Um, that, that's very fitting. Second question. After you walk into the barn and you use the boat to blow open the doors, Barry somehow seems to get all the way through the entire barn area over to the next door Walks uh, through the electric wires. I think he made it before without you. a problem. <laughs> I think I think he made but it. But Alan has to fight before off the so Tekken showed Tekken. up. He was just lucky. But Barry oh. doesn't even mention anything about it. That whole as there's soon a couple as you times hit that button, where you have to deal with his take, and he's like, "Ah, oh, come on, we gotta go." <laughs> You're over yeah, here fighting for your life. But here, here's here's my thing though. He acknowledges it though in those points. Yeah, as not, soon as yeah. the boat blows through the doors that taken comes through that window you gotta fight he yeah. doesn't say anything then as soon as you try to go down the stairs four or five taken fight you mm-hmm. then you gotta fight all the hordes outside and not once does uh barry say anything about it he just goes come on alan i think it's this door over here <laughs> So I don't know if that was it like might a just story be issue, I don't know I think it might just be a writing like, thing they just didn't is this like a reaction in in and that that still works into my crackpot theory as well because I truly do believe that this game is going to end uh, with like a Wizard of Oz type ending not necessarily like oh it was all a dream but like he's gonna we're gonna figure out everything with the I can't remember name the lady in black and with Thomas Zane and everything. And we're going to have some like penultimate conclusion and he's going to probably wake up with that, with that psychiatrist 
and they're going to, he's going to be like, Oh, it really was all a dream. I was crazy in this house. And he's going to like look next to him and it's going to be the book of what he wrote. Like the whole story that we just played or something. That's what I think is going to happen. No, but I, I think that's, that's the reason that. I, I, I don't want it, but I feel like that's where it's going. I feel like they're going to give us some supernatural, like cool <sighs> ending to a game. And that's where they're going to do something to leave it open. I can almost guarantee. I will put an Andrew stamp of almost guarantee on it. It says the Andrew stamp of approval. <laughs> All right. So whose timer just went off. Nobody's. Yes, it did. Not mine. I just that was the that. timer was saying George. we got to get moving. <laughs> All right, so that's it for Alan the Lake. That was a good episode. Yeah, and it was. Now we're it moving was into very interesting, very different. But uh, we are moving into the fantasy draft, which is the uh, final <laughs> little bit here. And uh, this this might be very cut and dry, or it might have a slightly different. Let's ruffle some feathers. I don't know if we're ruffling much here because I if if someone said something is their favorite game, would that always be the game that you would play if you were locked in a room and forced to play a game 16 hours a day for a year? Because is I want to main know main because I want to know for you guys, if you were locked in in a room and you had Internet access, a good computer, blah, blah, blah. But you were forced like you had to play. And I'm sure, there's money at the end. I don't know. But if you had to play a game 16 hours a day for an entire year. Is this what would you like answered? I feel like we've answered this before. I feel like we did. Are, are you finally to that point where we're going maybe. back in circles and like, I don't think we've done this before. I don't, but is this seven days? No, week? no. Okay. Nope. Never mind. You were thinking of the, uh, it was the vacation question. If you could spend a vacation oh, in, in a game. game. That, that's okay. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah. My bad. That was actually Steven's. Yeah. Steven threw that yeah. one out there. Nathan. What's up? 16 hours a day, seven days a week. Yeah. You are forced into, into doing this. So like you would legit really think about this. Like you can have a favorite game, but if there's like a game that you use your favorite game, but you might not necessarily want to play that long for an entire year, but like you have to f find something that you really could, could continue like doing stuff in that you think that you could continue. So this might actually knock out a lot of story based games, but I'm not sure. Who's first, right. second, third. So it goes me, Andrew. No. Yes, me, Andrew, Nathan, Nathan, Andrew, me. And mods are included cool. because they just... It, we're talking about the base game, and if you are adding mods to it, like that's fine. There's lots of games with yeah. mods, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Um, it's entirely up to you. But uh, wh wh who goes first? Uh, me. Okay. Then Andrew, then you, yeah, yeah. then you, Andrew, and me. My first game, of course, is going to be Escape from Tarkov. You think you could play that? that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Well, I think it's a bad idea because... <sighs> Because it's funny too. Because it's terrible. What? Hmm? I don't think it's terrible. It's just not for Andrew. Indeed. Hey, wipe happens in a couple weeks, and the game's about to change. They have. They're I swear you say. I swear every couple weeks you say there's a wipe in a couple weeks. They're putting in a tutorial map. <laughs> <gasps> After how many years? A lot. Now, what about story? All right, Andrew. What's your game? Uh, well, I'm trying to think of a game Persona 5. and no, that's my second pick because I know <laughs> no one's picking it. <laughs> um, you know what? Yeah, we'll be simple. I would definitely take Persona 5 Royal. The game takes about 120 to 140 hours to beat. There's still stuff I'm always figuring out when I play it. I'm down. So, okay. Wait. I just really, I just want to pick your brain on this real fast. So you really believe that you could, you, you could figure out. What is it? Uh, oh, almost or over 6,000 hours of gameplay. You think you could put that into there without killing yourself? With a smile on my face. Every you love day. that game. That's that's awesome. I All do. right. <laughs> I will never let go of the fact that I know we're never going to do it on the podcast. I feel like Just maybe we brought up something cool. similar to this before, because I remember talking about like, like picking a game I could maybe. speed run because I could just try to work on speed running it and getting better and better at it. But <laughs> Because some people do like that. Some people just play the same game for hours every yeah, day. Yeah, you're right. That's true. <laughs> I feel like Andrew keeps saying, like, I know for a fact we're never going to play it. It's kind of like one of them things to, like, it's just a meme at this try point. to get us to play it. I'm, I'm doing it for the memes at this point. If we ever play it, I'm super excited, but I just don't think. <laughs> All right, Nathan, to, so. what is your game? 
Uh, I mean, I'm I'm gonna be very basic with this one and say Valorant. Minecraft, Minecraft, Valheim, Halloran. No, <laughs> Minecraft, Come 100 on, percent without a doubt. No, I, there's so much like Val, my Valheim has so much, and I we're gonna get into that. My second pick, but oh no, I'm so sorry. Listen, at heart, we know that's your second, but Minecraft is. I, I there's it's just the most ultimate sandbox and you can just do so many things. There is a mod pack that if I was playing solo, there is a specific mod pack that if I was playing solo might take me a third of the time to finish 16 hours. That's ago. that's why like because that's why I changed it. I was like, I had an idea and then I'm like, no, I just can imagine doing Minecraft, it like, more than anything. And then I was like Minecraft. No, and then when I realized you said mods, I was like, Yeah, Minecraft. Yeah, I mean, you, I you're still playing Minecraft. Skyblock. It's just a yeah. Skyblock's awesome. Yeah, no, there's so much you can do in that game. It's and you can just if you get bored of like the specific kind of Minecraft you're playing, just like do a new mod pack or something like that. Like and I just think that there's a lot of variety. Other people, I just think there's do, so oh, much there's variety. So much. But all right, um, we could. What's your uh, second option since you just ruined everything? Oh, it's Valheim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Valheim. Yeah. Oh, a yeah. game with with uh, mating pigs with their own mothers. Shut up! Shut up! We don't talk about that. Okay, we don't talk about that. We don't talk about We don't ever do that. We don't do that in our lives. Oh, uh, well, I guess I don't really have anything to add to it. But... Nope. Nope. You're not going to get the option to. <laughs> okay. I'm, 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 I'm nervous. My second pick to give Nathan an opinion. I don't really have much to add. It's just a fantastic game, and there's just always something more to do in it. It's kind of like my new Minecraft in a way. Yeah, I will um, take a risk and pick a game that I have not played yet. Oh, Um, uh, But I also have a third pick after this, so we can do it (laughs) after the draft. But And one of you guys will really like it. Um, But one game, and this will be a shameless plug, um, that I would love to try to play and potentially play for, you know, 6,000 hours or whatever the number was. It's called Cassette Beasts. Um, it's a <laughs> Steam game. No, I'm telling you, listen, it's a Steam game. And it's like, I would com- I would compare it to a game that is Pokemon done better. Okay. Um, it is, Wild. it has a lot of story to it. It Wild has the same type of premise has the same type of premises as premises Pokemon, uh, but there are differences. So, for example, let's say, you know, we have the traditional like, oh, fire's good against plant or water's good against fire type thing. Mm-hmm. The here, One of the things that they do that's different, aside from doing a hugely great story from what I've seen, is if you, let's say, Nathan is fighting me and Nathan has an ice type and I have a fire type and I'd be like, Hey, fire that ice. You know what happens to that ice? It becomes water. And now the dynamics a little bit different because now I have a water type fighting a a fire type. That's pretty Um, interesting. And they use, they use a lot of like real life science for that stuff. So like you can actually give something static electricity and it changes the properties of it. And it does a lot of really interesting things from what I've seen. And it's also got the story aspect that wets my whistle and like I really just, you know, what I play games for. So I would be excited to play it. It is only like 20 bucks on Steam, I believe. It um, sounds kind of complicated so. in a way, not in a bad way, but it's just interesting yes and that no. it change yeah. their types. And every everything I've seen, like review wise on it is like 10 out of 10, 97 percent, like really good. Never even heard of it. Um, I'm super pumped to play. You should definitely look into it. We might play it on the channel. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Shameless plug. <laughs> but yeah, that Gosh. would be my second choice. I'm going to have to go with Grand Theft Auto. Okay. That, Which one? Do you have a specific a one? Easy choice. Uh, f- uh, I can't say six because it's not out. <laughs> Oh, so, fun fact, five. GameStop is getting the promotional trailer for GTA 6 this week. I've heard that. So you'll see it soon. Gaming News Article 5. That was an article that I want, I was going to send. But yeah, because GTA, you have a lot of role-playing servers you can jump on, um, take different jobs within the each server. Mm-hmm. So you can be heard- a cop for a week, you yeah. can be a truck driver a week, you could be a criminal a week. I've heard, although I'm not sure how true it is, that those RP servers are strictly on PC. Yes. Okay, that's what I thought. I was you just can curious. pick the servers and stuff, and you have to have like a third-party app for that, I think. 
Mm-hmm. And you can't do that stuff with console. So yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> good stuff. Well, yeah. good stuff. Uh Andrew had a third he wanted to throw out and it's Mega it's Man. Bro, game. listen, and it's not Mega Man, but it is only something <laughs> that Nathan knows. I would try because I liked it so much and I didn't realize it's actually on sale because it's finished now, which is why I would want to play it for like six thousand hours. Coromon. They do have it official now. <laughs> And I loved the beta of that game, and I'm so happy. Yeah, it was like well done. I remember, beta. I think, wasn't I playing that at the cabin when I when yes, we visited yes. uh, person's that name's took up a cabin? Lot of my, yeah. And you saw that it, took up like, a oh, lot that of actually looks time. really cool. Yeah. It took up a lot of my time there because I didn't want to be outside in the elements <laughs> of nature. So, so. Yeah, While I played it for a while. you guys were out having fun, I was, I was playing the game. It's pretty cool. I have, I have not. That was actually the last time I think I played it, though. So I think I will have to look into it since if they finished it and stuff like that. That's pretty cool. It's on Steam. All right. Well, Steam that right was here. a good episode, guys. Nathan, take us home. I'm taking us home. All right. Well, thank you all. One and all. Once again, we forgot at the beginning of the episode to be like, yo, like and stuff and leave reviews. But we'll just do it at the end. All right, for those the, the homies who are sticking through till the end are going to be the ones who actually oh, want to leave us a rating nice. anyway. But I do appreciate uh, anybody who does sit and listen through all of our ramblings and such. And uh, it, we've been having a lovely time. This is episode 18, which is wild to think about. We've been doing this almost six months now. And uh, we've had a good few weeks where we weren't able to put one out, but we're just not losing our minds over that. We're just doing our best to get them out weekly when we can. And uh, appreciate you guys listening. I will say... If you want to like the video, if you want to leave comment, interact in any way, subscribe to the channel, see future stuff. We always do appreciate it. And uh, we don't, you're no, you know, we're not, 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 well, one of us could be your father. I don't know, but I assume not. We're not your fathers not and me. we can't command you to do things, but we can ask you nicely. And if you want to be nice and be like, yeah, sure, why not? Then we'll be okay with it. And I'll tell you what, we'll have one lucky subscriber that uh, any new subscriber that we monitor from this week till the next video, I will pick one lucky subscriber to get a chicken McNugget delivered to your door. This is true. That's and we also will pay you a million dollars. That is a promise. No, a guarantee an Andrew no, guarantee. Just a nugget. Just a an nugget? Andrew, an almost Andrew guarantee, which means it may not happen. <laughs> <laughs> but the nugget. I will give someone a nugget if I see a new subscriber. Okay. If you will, subscribe between nugget. this episode and the next episode. And if you're the only one, you're just super lucky. So I would just suggest doing you're it. Getting a, we're yeah. going to yeah. mail you a nugget. We're going to mail you a nugget. I'll buy you a 10 piece. Andrew's going to mail you a nugget. You heard it. You, you heard it here, folks. You're getting a 10 piece. And if you, if you subscribe and you're not the only one, but you're the magic winner, nugget. Nugget. What kind of dipping sauce in the comments? That's a solid, solid idea, Andrew. Thank you. And Thanks, if you man. are listening to this on any of our lovely podcasting platforms, I would like to ask if you want to leave a rating on whatever platform you may be listening to us on, it will greatly... Charizard. Charizard. Sorry. You threw off my mojo. Uh, it will greatly help the podcast. It will great... Just getting ratings and getting like... That's getting like... Uh, people just interacting with it in such a way even if you like i mean ideally you don't rate it low but if you really hate this like do what you gotta do but interacting with it in general just gets it out there in the algorithm a little bit more that sort of thing so you know you ever want to do it we appreciate it uh and apart from that nugget yeah it is uh it is definitely time to go because josh almost doesn't yeah, have a josh shirt, is so trying I, uh, he's trying yeah. to be naked for this podcast that's all he wants, and I, we might have to eventually kick him out and replace him with Steven. So, not from GameStop. Mm. Sorry, sorry, friend. Um, I mean, oh, the other Steven. no, we will we'll have a battle of the Stevens. Ooh, okay. Steven Royale. Steven <laughs> Royale. <laughs> and with Choose that, Steven. ladies and gentlemen, my name was <laughs> Billy Bob Thornton. <laughs> 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 I'm Andrew. I'm Nathan. Have a good, lovely week. Love you.